516-393-1800 is the number. LITalks at News12.com is the email. Joining us in the studio is Suffolk Police Officer Dave Murray. And also with us, Dr. Timothy Jones, a veterinarian at Central Veterinary Associates in Valley Stream. And joining us on the phone is Sam Killey with the Nassau chapter of the American Red Cross. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. Yeah, Thank you both for coming in. I know you're on patrol tonight. You have to go back out. and You spent a whole day in the operating room, so we thank you both for spending time. Officer Murray, if, if I can start with you from a policing standpoint, and you're in a, in a, a special group called COPE. Yes. What does that stand for? For Community Oriented Police Enforcement. Okay, so you're out there. you got to know the neighborhood. You, you try to know the, the residents, the kids, the people. What about Halloween um, perhaps is your biggest worry? It's definitely a child getting hurt, without a doubt. Uh, there's a lot of concerns, both the vehicles and the people who are out during Halloween. Uh, we like to do extra enforcement. In fact, uh, this weekend we will be doing a lot of extra enforcement for Halloween. Um, an important topic, something that we talk about all the time here, is the, and you know, we were talking earlier, when I was a kid, you know, Halloween, the big deal was making sure people didn't put the x lax in with the candy or put razor right, blades right. into the apples. And in fact, I remember watching TV news, they were talking about which emergency rooms would x-ray the candy, and we thought that was pretty sick. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, you have predators to worry about. To what extent is that an issue? Well, you have concerns both as they're trick-or-treating and as they come up to the house. Uh, I would definitely caution children about people approaching them in vehicles, coming up and trying to engage in a conversation while they're walking in the street. And also, when you come to the house, there's no reason you should be going in someone else's house. You should be very leery of anyone who invites you in your house. In right now, house. I, I, one of the things that I wanted to include in this program was animals because um, you know, kids are very important, obviously, uh, but so are our pets, and in many Long Island homes, there are no kids, there are only pets. And there are some risks, Doctor, aren't there, to, uh, to animals at Halloween? Uh, quite a few. The two primary categories I worry about are injury via trauma and uh, toxic ingestion. And number one, the doors are open a lot for trick-or-treaters who are coming to the house. It's a perfect opportunity for a pet to bolt into the street. So you want to keep them away from the front door. Look at those dogs dressed up, by the way. <laughs> now, I saw something on Facebook that said, uh, with a caption, one of these dogs, why dogs bite? And it was <laughs> all these animals. Because they're dressed up Dressed like up that. in costumes, yeah. But uh, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Okay. The doorbell ringing for more, certain animals more than others? Cats more than dogs will get upset with the constant doorbell ringing all night long. What do you do? Um, Should you put them away? Down? Ideally, put them away for the night into a room that's quiet, darker, away from the front where there's not so much activity. Just having strangers at the door can upset them as well. Mm -hmm. Now, you talked about toxic ingestion, and um, I, I, we, we talked about that in humans, but in animals, uh, and maybe not necessarily even malicious. No. What kinds of things can animals ingest that would be toxic to them and not to our kids? A lot of things. Number one, chocolate. Chocolate is, uh, has theobromine, caffeine in it. Uh, first of all, causes vomiting and diarrhea in dogs. Then you worry about cardiotoxicity, where it can affect the heart, arrhythmias. And lastly, there's stimulants in chocolate, the caffeine, the theobromine, seizures, coma, death, if there's enough ingestion. Now, you and I, uh, I, I guess it was Dr. Charos from, from Central Vet, who I talked to earlier. Yes. Or, or was it you, maybe? I'm not sure who it was, but somebody told me also about uh, sugarless gum. Sugarless gum being contains an issue. xylitol. That's well, you the told sweetener. me that, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, as we do more studies, we find more things. And xylitol will cause their blood sugar to bottom out. If your blood sugar bottoms out, you can go into a coma and die as well. Mm -hmm. That usually can last about two days after they eat it. Really? Mm -hmm. All right. So the bottom line, again, is be careful with what you, what you feed the animals. Um, there, let me know, would you, would you, when the Red Cross gets, gets on the line with us, so we can talk to them as well. I'm sorry? Oh, they're there now. Good. Sam Kelly, are you there from the NASA Red Cross? Hi, Chad. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. You guys have come up with the Red Cross Lucky 13 uh, Halloween safety tips. Let's run through some of them, if you would, and, and explain the rationale behind them. The first one is to map out the route that you plan to roam. Uh, tell us about that. And Officer Murray, if, if you hear things that, that you agree with or want to amplify on, please feel free to jump in. Uh, sure thing. Well, of course, you know, the best thing anybody can do, parental supervision is always best. But if we know that, you know, the older kids like to go out by themselves, uh, so they should, you know, with the parents, map out the neighborhood, know where the kids are going to go, 
and if they decide that they want to get more candy that wasn't enough, you know, come home, talk to the parents, and then map out the next area that you're going to go. That way the parents know where the children are at all times. I want to ask uh, Officer Murray here, do you recommend that parents go with kids up to a certain age so that the kids are not out there alone? Honestly, it would be nice if they were with them up to the point that they stop going trick-or-treating. Right. You know, it, having, the import, having the parent there is very important. You need that supervision both, I, I think, uh, especially with vehicles. You know, what happens is when they're out uh, trick-or-treating, they forget about the, the common sense and the rules that they know about crossing streets at corners and looking both ways. That's forgotten when they're trick-or-treating. They're more concerned about getting that candy, and it's good having that third set, fourth set of eyes to watch over the children. Sam, you mentioned here number two on your lucky 13 list is uh, bring flashlights. Exactly. Uh, you know, it gets dark outside. Kids are running around. Kids are small. Usually, a lot of time they're wearing dark costumes. Um, so we want the children to be seen so that they're not out there. They don't get injured. Plus, when you're walking around in the dark, um, if you, you, know, you never know something might be on the sidewalk. You can trip, fall, get hurt. So it's always good to have that flashlight as a, an extra precaution. Now, the next one, it's, it seems obvious, and it's something that uh, Officer Murray alluded to, of course, is accept treats at the door and do not go inside. It's sort of self-explanatory, and yet every year we hear of some story where a kid is lured. Uh, you got to get that point across to the kids. Do not go in no matter what you're promised. Exactly, and even if it's a family that you know, if you're not there with your parents and your parents don't say that it's okay to go in and your parents go with you, never go into a person's house, especially strangers. Now, this is a hard one when you have little ones, but it says use face paint instead of masks, which will cover your eyes. This is sort of simple, one would think. You don't want to cover your eyes and trip, but how do you argue with a kid, you know? <laughs> well, exactly, but uh, sometimes, you know, we as parents just need to put our foot down. Easier said than done. Wear light-colored clothing and use reflective tape. That uh, back again to uh, what, what we've been talking about insofar as traffic is concerned. Walk on the sidewalks and not in the street. Look both ways before crossing the street and only at the corners. Now, here's another point which I think is, is very important on the next screen, which is wigs, capes, and costumes are flammable attire, so avoid open flames to prevent a fire. In the old days, we used to walk around with, with lit candles, didn't we? And, and, and that's really not a smart thing to do. Uh, you know, use flashlights, you know, they're, they're not a, a flammable hazard. Also, a lot of people that are jack-o'-lanterns that are out on their stoops, they like to put candles in them to illuminate them. A little kid comes by with a, you know, a little princess in a flowing gown, next thing you know, she could catch on fire. Use a glow stick in, inside of that jack-o'-lantern instead. It's a lot safer. Next point is be on the lookout for drivers and cars. And um, Officer Murray, are, are you guys going to be, uh, the guys and gals on patrol, going to be looking to make um, perhaps things a little safer on the streets with traffic stops rather than on the high-speed highways on the local streets? That's People blowing stop signs, going too fast, that kind of thing? That's absolutely correct. We're going to be in the residential neighborhoods. We're going to be looking to enforce the smaller speed zone areas and worry about someone, some of the children getting hit or hurt by these motorists. Uh, by the way, what if you know, and I, I know it's not uniform, but what is the speed limit on most side streets? Is what, 30? It depends on which town. Uh, the okay. town that I cover, which is Brookhaven yeah. Town, the town, co the town limit is 30 miles per hour. It is, okay. So you need to be careful of that. Let me go back to, uh, to animals for just a moment here because um, I, I, I just, I worry. We were talking about costumes. Um, people put costumes on animals. We saw mm -hmm. that. What's the potential danger there? Um, a lot of times they'll chew their way out of something if they're uncomfortable. If they swallow a button or any piece of material, especially it can get bound up in the intestines of the stomach, you have to surgically remove it. Mm -hmm. Some of the most common things in small puppies, they were being mischievous. There's old Tootsie Roll and uh, this, this guy. I would say never you see, use now, a is costume. that a bad costume with all that, that fringe? That is a dangerous costume. Yeah. And never use a costume that you're, when you're not supervising. How about all those flowers around the collar? As long as you're watching <laughs> your pet and you know them fairly well, you should be okay. Unsupervised, that could easily be a foreign body obstruction. See, there's another one there where it, now it's dragging on the ground. You could get caught up in it too. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate to spoil people's fun, but um, I, you know, a <laughs> procedure to open the, open the dog's stomach and get into the intestine and remove this. I know it cost my son thousands of dollars when it had to do it on a cat. So oh, yeah, it's definitely thousands it's, of dollars.